Hey, I got a video for you today, but before we get into the video, a quick health update for you. In my last video, I shared that I'm being treated for leukemia and that's going well. I'm feeling good, but the big piece of news is I am officially in remission. That's pretty big. I've still got more treatments to go. I'm in the middle of treatments. It's kind of a long road, but I'm hopeful that I'm gonna make a full recovery. I've got energy and I'm feeling good. I've just gotta see this thing through. In, in that first video where I shared my diagnosis, such an outpouring of <laughs> such, uh, so many people telling me they'd pray for me, keep me in their thoughts and prayers. Um, I don't know, it, it just, it. I guess I needed that. And, and I really appreciate it. And I, I tried to answer <laughs> every one of them, over 3,000 comments. I think sometimes I'm no different than a lot of men. We don't, you know, a lot of us, I don't think I need much encouragement. But then when I get it and I realize I needed it, well, it, it hits, if you know what I mean. So again, I just want to share that little good piece of news that I'm in remission. I've got energy. I've got the drive to keep moving forward, keep putting one foot in front of the other, keep contributing. All right, let's get into the video. I'm going to put together a fire pit kit today that was cut out for me by my friend Matt Hayden using a CNC plasma table. This is part one. I'm going to do some TIG tacking and some TIG welding on this one and then we'll finish it up with MIG welding on part two. It's not much fun TIG welding plasma cut surfaces so the first thing to do here is hit that with a flap disc and get it nice and clean on all these edges. I'm going to do a lot of outside corner stuff today. It's 11 gauge steel. Because it's CNC cut, I know all the edges are straight and accurate, and if I just line them up on a flat surface, they'll kind of fit themselves together. But I'm going to go ahead and make things even easier and foolproof and use these lineup pins because I got this fixture table from Prime Weld. It's got all the holes indexed, and this thing should just fall together. So all I got to do is take a couple of pins each way to get a 90 degree angle and slam them up against that, and then make sure that that joint meets with no gap and what could go wrong like I said don't really need the pins once it's fit up and there's no gap there's really not much that can go wrong but I'm just gonna make it easy and speaking of making it easy this little tool here is really handy it's a jumbo mag tab from strong hand tools it's just like the smaller mag tab but it's got way stronger magnets so I'm taking it apart because I don't need both pieces of it. The, the thing I'm interested in is the V-pad part. You can see how it just locates itself on that odd angle. I did this little video clip years ago just kind of showing how strong the magnets are. That's a one inch thick piece of plate right there. And it has no trouble picking that thing up. There's a lot of ways you could put this project together and weld it. All right, this is a MIG project all day long. In fact, you could easily do it with a 115 volt MIG. You could do it with 115 volt uh, self-shielded flux core. You could even do it with a buzz box or a small stick welder with 6011 rods and go downhill on all these outside corner joints and it would go together really well. But, but what I thought I would do would be tack it with TIG. You know, when you tack with MIG, you got these lumps that you got to go over unless you want to grind them out, especially in motorsports. A lot of these guys on outside corner joints will tack with TIG and then come over with MIG. That's, that's kind of what I'm going to do today. I'm going to tack it using a torch switch. These come with a lot of welders. I'm gonna be using Prime Weld 225, it comes with this. If you've got a torch switch with your welder and you're not sure how to use it, you, your welder's got 2T and 4T functions, this video should help you. So I'm gonna use the 2T function to tack with. No upslope, no downslope, just pap, about 95 amps, put a small tack on there, get off of it. Then I'll do a little bit of welding on outside corner joint using the 4T function. On 11 gauge, you don't really need that much amperage control. I can dial it in, I don't really need a foot pedal, but I'll have upslope and downslope for the beginning and the end. And we'll explain all that as we go. Part two, we'll MIG weld the rest of it out and you'll see the finished product. Let's do it. For these really small tack welds, I put a number four cup on there just to save some gas. I'll only need about 10 CFH and I'm gonna turn my post flow down really low and that'll save gas. Let's go over 2T settings real quick. All I need to do on this machine is click the 2T button. 2T stands for two touches. First touch starts the arc, second touch ends the arc. Easy way to set this thing up is just bottom out the start current, the upslope, the downslope, and the end current. Have them all set on zero. Then I'm going to turn my post flow down to maybe five seconds. 
my pre-flow up to maybe, I don't know, not even half a second. Don't even really need it. And my amperage, I'm going to set it on 95 because I know I'm going to have a few little gaps. You know, so it's touching that pin, touching that pin, it's touching these two pins. And all I need to do now when I, before I get my tack is make sure this is corner to corner right here. On some of these tack wells where I didn't have any gap, I didn't need any filler rod at all. But it's a good idea to have a filler wire in your hand when you're tack welding like this with all that amperage all at once. So where there were little small gaps, I just put a little dab of filler and that's all it took. Now the thing is, i got to be really nice and easy with this thing because I've only got a handful of little tiny tacks on there. But I'll be nice and easy. I'll set this one on the floor, set the other one up. And then when I get it tacked, I'll put the two halves together. You can see I can just throw this MagTab Jumbo on there and it frees up a hand. It's just all about making the job go easier. I'll prop the cup and make quick tacks. I can prop the cup and line that tip of that electrode up and just get a quick zap. That's a nice handy feature with a torch switch. This thing's practically falling together. Love that. Throw the big jumbo mag tab on there again. Freeze up a hand. And again, I can prop that cup, tap that torch switch, and get a bunch of tacks really quickly. I like my outside corner joints to be corner to corner, whether I'm MIG welding or TIG welding. So I turned it upside down and put a little spacer up in there to get a nice corner to corner fit. You can see I've got some gaps here, but I'm just working my way inward, closing that gap up. This bottom will be MIG welded, so it won't be any trouble. So now we're about ready to TIG weld. I'm going to use a Jazzy 10 ceramic. It lets me extend the electrode a little bit further so I can shoot an arc shot. The cup won't be in the way. And we need to talk about 4T now because I like a little upslope and downslope when I'm welding. Don't need it for tacking, but I like it for welding. You don't need upslope and downslope when you got a foot pedal plugged in because the foot pedal takes care of that. But if you're using a torch switch, you can set upslope and downslope to ramp the current up and ramp it down. I'm going to go up a little bit on the current here to 105 for the weld. Turn it on 4T. I still want to be on zero on the start current, but I'm going to give myself a couple of seconds of upslope couple of seconds of downslope and leave the end current down at zero again. I want to turn my post flow up just a little bit in case I need to make a restart. That tends to make restarts go better if you can shield where you ended your weld. So now I should be ready to go but let's talk about 4T. 4T settings go kind of like this. The first touch of the trigger when you hold it in starts the pre-flow and gets the start amps going. And when you let off the trigger, it starts the upslope. When you press the trigger again, it initiates the downslope. And then when you let off finally on that fourth thing, you get the end amps and the post flow cycle. Sometimes it helps to watch it on a turntable. So on a turntable, you can kind of see the, the bead start off really small when you initiate the arc. There's hardly any current going there. And then it ramps up. That's your second touch. And you get your operating current, and then you touch it again, it hits the downslope and trails out to a comet trail, and then it ends. And that's the benefits of a 4T function on a torch switch. When you're on an end like this, you need a little bit of amperage control sometimes. And then when you get to the end, especially on aluminum when things are all heated up and getting all watery, two or three seconds from the end, you let off that trigger and you get some taper off. It really helps. I like a foot pedal. I love a foot pedal. I prefer it, but sometimes a torch switch actually works better. I'm going to throw a TIG finger on here, a shameless product placement plug here, but it really is going to come in handy. It's going to help me go all the way without stopping, without my pinky screaming on me. I'm going to make this 14-inch run or whatever it is here. Without stopping, propping right next to the weld. I'm using a 332 filler rod ER70S2, 105 amps, the 4T function with the torch switch, and I'm just rolling on at a pretty decent travel speed. Question is, how would you know that 105 amps would work really well on this? Well, if you've been doing it a while, you kind of can guess what amperage will work on something. But for me, I can refer back to videos that I've done. I've done quite a few outside corner joints on 11 gauge. I'll show you one, some nice arc shots coming up here in a minute. But I knew that 105 amps was what I had used before. And I knew that it would work pretty good. And there's a lot of leeway too. You know, I could do 120 amps, 130 amps, and just go really fast, or go all the way down to 90 amps and go slower with a, a smaller filler rod. It's not an exact science sometimes, but uh, it helps to have an idea 
on what settings will work. I'd have to be slap out of range here in order for things to go poorly, but I do want some decent penetration. I want a decent looking weld, but I think that's going to be fine. Okay, I mean, I'm not looking for rainbow colors here on carbon steel. I'm going to hit this with some rattle can high, high temp paint anyway. How did I know exactly 105 amps would work? Well, here's, here's how. Previous video, I'm using some of those smaller V-pads here just to fit this thing up, just to make it go easy. This is cold rolled steel, 11 gauge. I got some small tacks on it, just exactly like I did earlier, except I'm using a foot pedal. There's my setup, except I'm using smaller filler wire and ER70S6 filler wire. Those are just some minor details. I knew 105 amps would work. So here's some nice arc shots here. Here I'm using a foot pedal to control and ramp up the heat on that corner, but I could have easily done this job with the torch switch too. You want to keep a nice tight arc. Good rule of thumb is arc length on something like this should be equal to or slightly less than your electrode diameter. That's a really good rule of thumb. Torch angle should be limited, but torch angle is pretty darn forgiving if your arc length is right. I'm trying to keep that hot tip of the rod shielded with the argon. The Jazzy 10 cup's got a little larger uh, argon shield, so it really helps to do that. Helps keep a nice clean puddle on something like this, especially on stainless steel. I come up to the end. I want to start thinking about tapering off amperage. And what I do is I usually get to the end and then taper off and then back up, back into the weld a little bit and taper it like this to avoid a crater hole. And then I hold the torch still while the post flow gas times out. I hope you like this video. If you're interested in any of the gear that I use in this video, go to weldmonger.com. This is the machine I use. It does go out of stock sometimes. If you've been shopping for a Prime Weld 225 and you see it in stock, you might want to pull the trigger. We've got lots of other high quality welding gear. This is how I support these videos. I appreciate your support.